Dave Palumbo here for Palumbo's Pythons and Boas for another installment of Muscle Serpents University. Today we're going to be talking about something a little different. No snakes today. Blue tongue skinks, my new obsession. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you what I just picked up and I'm going to give you a little information on it. And who knows what else might happen. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, we're here in my snake room. I call this snake room number three. This is where all the ball pythons are, all the babies are. And it's also now where my blue tongue skinks are. So I got a few in, I'm starting off, uh, I'm learning the rope. So I'm not an expert by any means, but you know, I'm trying to get some stuff that's a little more high end. Now, uh, there's two types of skink, you know, pretty much that, that, that people work with. There's many, many types, but there's the Australian ones, uh, which are from the, you know, obviously the country of Australia. You got your Northern blue tongues, you got your eastern blue tongues. There's a whole variety of them there. And then you have your Indonesian blue tongue skinks, which are much higher up latitude-wise, and it's warmer there. So there's, there's, there's different ways of keeping them and breeding them. So uh, let, let me show you my northern uh, blue tongue I got. She's a, um, she's a proven breeder. I actually bought her from a woman online. Very nice. Um, and the great thing about blue tongues, you, they're really easy to keep. You can keep them in a tub. They don't need like you know external UV light. Uh, they don't, like most, uh, I guess you could say, lizards do, they don't have to eat insects. You can feed them cat food. Uh, I feed them, I'm feeding them a very high premium brand cat food that I feed my uh, blue-eyed white Persian cat. Very expensive food. And then once a week she gets canned dog food. And I use a, a grain-free uh, dog food that I feed to my little Maltese and, and teacup uh, Yorkie. So uh, they're going to be well fed. Obviously, you always want to keep a fresh source of water. It's important to change the water every day too, because if the water gets dirty, they won't drink it. Also, I heard if the water is warm, a lot of times they won't drink it. So I try to put cold water here. Now, uh, I also give her a hide box, and I have I put her on paper, paper towels, so it's easy to change. But for, I got this trick from my friend Colin Schumark in Australia, whose house I've actually been to. Put a little straw in here to kind of give them the feeling of being able to hide and feelings very secure because you want your blue tongues to feel secure. Now, this girl's underneath here. She's hiding out. We're going to take her out a little bit. She's very, very friendly and nice. And you can see, if you get a close-up of her tongue, why they call her a blue tongue skink because she's got a blue tongue. Look at that. Now, uh, the females and males are sometimes hard to tell apart. Um, this is one of the things that no one's really mastered yet. But the males tend to have, like, especially the adults, tend to have two bulges here, which is where the, you know, kind of analogous to the testicles, I guess. Uh, they'll produce, you know, uh, sperm plugs from there. They, a lot of times you can see the sperm plugs, they drop them in the, in the actual tubs um, if they're adults. Uh, also, supposedly, if you look at the top of the blue tongue, the females will tend to have a straighter body, whereas the males will be a little wider at the shoulders, you know. A little bit more V-taper, as we say in bodybuilding. Uh, this girl's being pretty nice. She's being very uh, cool. Uh, I'm hoping maybe to breed her to something. I'm, I'm coming up with, I have an idea for, I have a project uh, that I'm thinking of and I'm not really going to reveal the whole project yet because I don't want to jinx myself if it doesn't work out. But I have someone in mind for her, right? You might be breeding this year. Now the Northerns, when they breed, you have to, they have to go through a period of what they call brumation. In other words, that means it's not really hibernation, but you cool them down and you don't feed them for like six weeks. And then after that six weeks is all over, you bring up the temperatures again, you start feeding them, and then they're ready to breed. So, and that's because where these are found in Australia, it gets a little cool in the winter. And so they, that cooling down is what kind of stimulates their body to want to breed. Um, now let's, let's put her down for a second, and we're going to go into another tub where we, I'm going to show you my Indonesian blue tongue skinks. Now these are, uh, once again, from much higher up. And don't forget, when we're talking about the southern hemisphere, higher means closer to the equator closer to the equator you are, the warmer it is. These Indonesian skinks basically live in a warm climate all the time. So they don't require that cooling down period to kind of stimulate breeding. It's, you know, around this time of year is the breeding season. You know, you can start, you know, introducing them, but, and, and we'll go through that in another video. But they don't need to be, once again, cooled, and you don't have to take away their food. They can continue to eat, too. So that's kind of cool. It makes it a little easier. I think that's probably why more people work with the Indonesians. Uh, than anything else and they're easier to get because they're you know it, it's not illegal to get them out of indonesia now this is 
Well, let me show you this one first. This is my male, uh, Indonesian. Now, I decided with the Indonesian that I was going to go for a morph. This is an azanthic, um, a blue tongue skink. Once again, azanthic means that it's lacking yellow pigment, but it's also lacking red pigment too, even though that technically would be considered, uh, considered aneurysmic. But it definitely doesn't have, it lost all its yellow pigment. And so you got a, basically a black and white skink here. Um, and it's just, I love it. I love this black and white. And if you look, the Indonesians always have the, the solid colored legs, uh, front arms there. So you can see the totally black arms. Uh, they got this silvery black look to them. And to me, this is just like super cool. I just like azanthic, you know. I, and, and when you look at azanthic snakes, they never have this degree of azanthicness to them, if that's even a word. Um, he's uh, kind of in shed. He's probably going to shed in the next day or two. But uh, he's, he's, uh, he's ready to breed, this guy. And I'm hoping to breed him this year to something. I have a female, but I'm going to show you her, and I'm going to explain why I might not breed him to her this year. You'll find out. So this guy's kind of cool. Sometimes they make a little bit of a blowing noise. You'll hear that like blowing noise when they're a little upset. He seems to be pretty cool. I got to tell you, these, these, these blue tongues, I know some of them can sometimes be a little aggressive. He's, he's a really good boy. And uh, I've had no problem handling him. And he's, he's eating pretty good now. But he's definitely going to shed. So we're going to put him back. Once again, also with the Indonesians, because it's warmer from where they're from, they, need, they tend to need more humidity. So I, once in a while, I'll put a little, I'll mist it down here. But it seems like this water bowl adds enough humidity to the tub because there's really not that much uh, air access here. Now, if you look at the female I got, and I won this on an auction. I had to bid a lot of money for it. Too. <laughs> she um, is, the, the interesting thing about her is she's a lot smaller, but, and I'm going to take her out. She's also, we, I believe, gravid. If you look at the bulge right here, she's, you can feel her belly is full. I'm pretty sure she's got some babies in there. Uh, the thing is, we don't really know who the father is. So I don't know if they're going to come out azanthic, if the father was an azanthic, or if it was, she was bred by a, you know, a regular Indonesian skink, in which case all the babies would be het azanthic. Either way, they're going to be very desirable babies if they are born. If, if she's not gravid, which I'm pretty sure she is, I will breed her to the male I showed you. Now, once again, going back, getting back to the thing about Indonesian skinks, they don't need to be cooled down or anything like that. So uh, we would start that probably in the next month. But I, I think she's going she's gonna to give birth to babies pretty soon. The great thing about her is that uh, the blue tongue skinks give birth to live young. So it's going to be cool. We're going to see a bunch of little babies running around here. And as you can see, my arm, uh, unlike snakes, lizards definitely have uh, sharp claws. And so this is not even being scratched. This is just from walking on me. Uh, so this is my new obsession, guys. Blue tongue skinks, they require a lot more care than, than snakes do. You got to check on them every day, fresh water. Uh, you know, they, because they eat every day, they poop every day usually. And so that requires more work. So you got to know what you're getting into commitment wise with them. To me, they're a little more personal than the snakes. It's something different. I, I'm still obsessed with snakes, but this is something new I think is really cool. We're going to see some great new morphs in the United States over the next, you know, five to 10 years. And who knows what's going to happen. Hopefully we'll catch up to Australia and have even some better stuff here. So I'm excited about it. Hopefully you guys are. If you have uh, questions, you can put them in the comments below. Any more suggestions, once again, always feel free to hit me up anytime you want. Uh, you can email me at huge285 at AOL.com. Or you can go to my Facebook page, Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Um, I'm Dave Palumbo with another installment of Muscle Serpents University.